Okay, we are live. And so today for our weekly team training, this is Team Pay It Forward. I am Crystal Milligan, founder of Team Pay It Forward. And I am really excited um, to be bringing you one of our newest Diamond Coaches. Um, Courtney has been on the team now for about four months. Um, and I, I met her through Instagram, and the second that I met her, I knew that I wanted her on my team. Um, she was very inspiring um, and just had a lot of the characteristics of the type of person that I was looking for. Um, as I've grown as a coach, I've gotten more and more specific as to who I want to have on my team and the people that I want to surround myself with. And so she was exactly what I was looking for. Um, and it's proven to be true because once she finally, she did tell, tell me no initially, but once she finally came on board, I realized that the more and more I've gotten to know her, I, I call her, she's my soul sister because I want her to like move in next to me and you know, she has a family and everything else and we're going to raise our babies together and all of that kind of stuff. Um, which is exciting that you can actually make friends, um, through a business like this, doing something that you're passionate about. And so she has grown, um, into an incredible coach and I'm just really impressed on a regular basis, um, at how she leads her team and, and, and the things that she's accomplishing, um, along the way. And so I'm really excited to be kind of, interviewing her for our um, team training this week. So I'm going to have Courtney start out by just sharing a little bit about how she got started, um, you know, how she said no initially, initially and what her skepticism was about, um, and then why she actually decided to become a coach. So go ahead, Court, if you could share that, that would be awesome. Sure. Um, so like Crystal said, I said no at the beginning, and it's kind of embarrassing now come to think of it because um, I all of my reasons for saying no were um, completely wrong. So I'm glad that I've proved myself wrong. But um, so when Crystal approached me, I think it was like last December or something like that, maybe, um, you know, almost last year, maybe, I don't know. Um, and I said no because she was just talking to about Beachbody. And I knew a little bit about Beachbody. I knew about the program Insanity. I had done that before. Um, and I, I wasn't in love with the program, so that didn't really appeal to me. And then um, I also just saw it as another like network marketing scheme type thing of um, her trying to just make a profit off of me. And so I um, completely judged her and didn't really give it a chance. Um, and I think in all honesty, um, I had an attitude of like, well, I'm better than that. I don't like, that's not really something that um, I need to do. Kind of like a really um, selfish attitude. So um we remained friends. We continued communicating on Facebook through messages. She was very good about um, keeping in touch with me, informing with me. Um, I didn't respond to many of those messages either, um, but she was consistent, and I was following her on Instagram and Facebook. So she was constantly posting about her job and this coaching opportunity and her lifestyle and how she's working out and getting paid and. Um, a lot of the things that she was sharing um, really hit home to me. Um, she was being real about her life and how much she loved it. And I was like, gosh, that's you don't see that very often. You don't really see people loving their life or being really passionate about their job that they're talking about it all the time. Um, so I, I was not annoyed, but I was like intrigued by this, um, this person talking about it all the time. Um, so... I kind of just watched her, and I didn't really say much to her. Um, I was planning a, a wedding at the time, so that was also on the back burner when she would reach out to me. I just I didn't really have time to consider it. Um, and I was also living overseas, so there's a lot of different components of why I just didn't really care to give, a, give an answer to her. And then um, after I got married, I was living in New Zealand with my husband, and um, – I was just working at a bank and I was just working part time and I still saw Crystal's posts and I thought, you know, maybe there is something to this. Maybe I should just ask her like a question. She probably won't 
jump on me, I hope, but I'll just ask a question about it. Um, and so I reached out to her and just kind of started thinking about my future and what I wanted. And um, we started a conversation about the coaching opportunity. And she was really gracious with my lack of communication to her in previous messages and um, basically just acted as if I was one of her good friends having a conversation about something that she loved to do. So I really appreciated that. And we scheduled a video chat. And then... Um, I think it was about a month, though, where I was consistently looking up on YouTube um, what this coaching opportunity was, and I did my own research, a lot of my own research, because I'm the type of person that if I'm going to do something, I wanted to do it well and know that I was going to succeed, so um, I kind of wanted that assurance before I committed. Awesome. Yay, thank you. Um, I think it's funny because, and you say like, oh my gosh, I feel bad now or whatever about being skeptical um, and thinking that you were better. I totally felt the same way when I first started um, being a trainer. I was like, what are these stinking videos going to do for me? Like, I was like, yeah, right. Like, they're going to be like, you know, I don't know, Jane Fonda-esque or whatever, Richard Simmons or whatever, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I totally was super cocky about that. Um, and same thing, I was making my own shakes, like buying individual products and maca and like greens and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm buying this, whatever. How can I, I don't, I don't do supplements like that. Um, so I'm right there with you. And, and one of the key things that I, I want to share based off of that, Courtney is an incredible coach and I am super stoked to have her on the team and blessed that she decided to say yes. Um, and just it goes to show you that follow up is huge, guys. It doesn't mean just because someone tells you no. Again, I didn't like go after her and be like, "So, do you want to be a coach now?" Like, I think you should be a coach because da da da. I wasn't crazy with that, but it was all about like I was connecting with her. Like when I saw she's getting married, I was like, "Oh yay, congratulations!" And like so, I was interested in her life. Genuinely, I, I genuinely commented. I genuinely connected with her, and so whether it takes a month or six months, or sometimes people take a couple of years even, and they watch you, um, it doesn't mean. Remember, a, a no is not always a no. It's typically often a not right now, and so that's why we always say, "Go for no's, go for no's," because you are planting seeds a lot of the times too, um, and people. I have lots of assumptions about this. I know that I watched a couple of the videos that Christy posted from the leadership this past weekend, and one of the things that Carl Deichler, our CEO, had said was that a lot of people still look at this as an MLM. And we are MLH, we are multi-level helping, not really multi-level marketing, and so we need to get this persona, this image of us being these, you know, sleazy MLM type company um, where it's all about dollars and all about money signs rather than people and helping people. Um, we need to get rid of that image and we need to portray what we're really about. And so, um, you know, sometimes it takes time and you're going to have to fight against a lot of skepticism and a lot of, um, you know, assumptions. And so, that's why we talk about like no is a good thing a lot of the times and people will watch you and you know we we, we share all these things with you because you know they are important and so just obviously you know great things can come from you know a no or anything else okay so um, expand a little bit on how you started um, how you did and have hit success club um, right away and, and, and hit success right away um, and share if you I know that we've discussed some of these things but I, I'd love for you to share also um, the doubts and fears that you may have had and how you overcame them and, or are overcoming them also so how you you know how you had success um, and anything doubts and fears that you've had to overcome yeah, good question. So when I first started, um, my husband actually plays professional basketball overseas. So our whole life is built overseas and not even in one place. It's all over the world each year we move somewhere new. So um, when I first started, Crystal kind of had to get creative with how to approach me about um, what it would look like to start. Um, she really did her research, which I really appreciated. I knew exactly what I was getting into and how it could work um, without her feeling like, oh, yeah, 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 it'll work out. And then I, 
I don't know how it's going to work out. So we really talked about that a lot um, when we talked about signing up as a coach. And um, so when I signed up, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. <laughs> And I, I think back now and I look at like some of my old posts. And I'm like, gosh, wow, I've learned so much. That's so great. I really, I really like that. <laughs> um, but I think the biggest thing is that I knew that Crystal had seen success and I had confidence in her ability to train me to do that. So um, I was a sponge, to be honest. I uh, spent all my time um, watching YouTube videos. I would look up Melanie Mitro and watch all her stuff. Um, I would pay attention to what the top leaders were um, posting in the Facebook groups. Um, I would pay attention to what Crystal was doing, how she was talking. I wanted to talk like that. I wanted to basically pretend like I was the boss before I was the boss. So um, I had a roommate in college that was always saying how, you know, you got to fake it till you make it. And so I kind of just did that, I guess. And um I reached out to a uh, warm market. I don't think I really invited very much at the beginning uh, because I, I wasn't quite sure how to do that and I, I was really uncomfortable with that a little bit. Um, so most of my uh, points from that first month came from people who I already had a relationship with and already had trust built up with and I had just simply posted about this opportunity that I was doing um, and how I was doing a 30 day challenge and that's where my people came from. Um, they had various reasons for um, wanting to do the 30-day challenge. And so luckily, um, that happened. Um, and to be honest, too, I think a lot of that is because when I first sat down to do this business, I really set it in my heart that I didn't want to do this apart from God. Um, and so for me, I said, okay, Lord, like you take this business and I want to see success because I want to earn my ticket to summit. So I'm going to trust you for the results. Um, and really like that's, that's what happened. I applied every day consistently the things I was learning and, um, jumped head in into the new coach training. Um, and then every training after that, um, I did as well. I think I did diamonds like right away which was kind of entertaining because I wasn't even close I think I had like one coach um but that so, helped me move forward right but, that big goals that's what it's all about it's about dreaming big exactly. and often I find that coaches don't dream big enough because they often aren't used to you know dreaming at all or setting these big goals big hairy audacious goals you know and and it's intimidating and so people say oh yeah I like to do this or whatever like they set small and so when you go big hey why not what's the worst thing that can happen you surpass even you know like where you would even like that's how you go that's how you grow fast you know right right yeah I totally agree um I think that was really the reason that pushed me forward is I had these big goals like oh well you know, Crystal said that she has gotten to X, Y, and Z in her business in two and a half years. Like, well, I need to do that in one year. So how are we going to do that? <laughs> so I just kind of like, that's what I wanted to do. You know, I, I think part of me felt like, you know, if I'm doing this and my husband's not going to complain about me trying and starting a new business, I need to make sure that it darn works. And I'm not going to be paying money every month. I'm going to be earning money every month. So I really set my my goals high, but at the same time, I didn't really understand what high goals would be. So I kind of had this ignorance is bliss thing first starting out. So that first month, I don't know if I had too many um, established doubts and fears. It was more of like, oh, I just don't know how to do that. So I just kind of learned how to do things along the way. But um, I would say that once I got into my second month, I started having more doubts and fears just about adding coaches. Um, Emerald is the first marker that you really want to hit, and I, um, I didn't, I couldn't sign my husband up as one coach because he is not American <laughs> and he doesn't have a green card or anything. So that's really beneficial to me. Um, and so I had um, kind of that barrier, I guess, that people could see that as like, oh gosh, that might take a while to hit Emerald. But um, I just like. Like Crystal did with me, I just got to know people and I shared the opportunity with them. And there was two ladies that got involved. Um, 
and they became one became a business builder and one became a discount coach. Um, and once that started happening, once I started to see momentum, I think that's when the fears and hesitations started to come in really um, because it was almost like, oh gosh, like I wasn't expecting this to work and it is and now I'm scared that it might not <laughs> like in the future. I don't like I don't know what to do with success. It's just um, yeah, I just I think I had the fear of not having success each month. Uh, because every month you're back at zero with success clubs. So that is intimidating, you know um, And then I had one of my first coaches the one that was a business builder She quit so that was in itself a barrier as well. Like am I a good leader? Can I do this? Can I keep people on long term or is it just gonna be this spinning wheel? Um, so just various uh, questions that I had in my mind uh, but the best thing that I did to help me alleviate those fears is get involved in um, the August team challenge. Um, Crystal really saw it as an opportunity for me to expand and she really pushed and believed in me that we could hit Success Club 20 as a group or as individuals in the group. Um, so that was my goal. I was like, I have never hit Success Club 10, but I'm going for Success Club 20. <laughs> And I completely failed in a sense. Um, I hit Success Club 5. Um, and I didn't even hit that until like the last three days of the month. And that was after trying my hardest. Let, but, do, but it's a failing forward experience. Yes. The fact that you yes. didn't give up and that you committed to at least hitting your goals of success, you know, hitting Success Club in general is right. Right. So I was inviting, um, we had a goal to invite like over 200 people. So I was inviting maybe like 10 to 20 people a day. I was inviting absurd amounts of people. I was working around the clock. Um, this was the same time that we were negotiating contracts. We were at home and my husband was negotiating contracts. And so it was chaotic and he was really, um, not understanding like why I was so insistent on working so hard. So that was a bit of a challenge as well. But um, yeah, so like Crystal said, I didn't, I failed forward, but I didn't have any success for any of the work that I did until the last week of the month. And I barely hit success club. And I was just shocked. I was like, if I put in all of this work and I see that little of a response, like what is this gonna mean? But then September came and I had an insane month. Like everything came to fruition in September. So um, I think that's when I realized that your biggest barrier is often going to be yourself. And if I choose to believe that I can do this and I put in the work, if I don't see it this month, I will see it next month. And um, it also taught me that I never want to assume that I have business and I always want to pretend like I am going to the wire to get Success Club 5 every month. If I act like that, I will guaranteed hit Success Club 10, 20 because I'm pretending like I have nothing. So I'm working as if I have nothing and that's what's going to generate the business. Um, so yeah, that's just what I'm encouraging my coaches to do right now is to really focus on um, like even if you have three coaches that might be in the pipeline that are signing up tomorrow like pretend like you got nothing because that's when you're gonna pursue more and more coaches and people might bail on you like that's just the nature of people sometimes so yeah I think those are a few of my fears I guess yeah so many so many good points I'm like taking notes over here furiously I just want to reiterate three points that you made. Um, first of all, I want to say I love your attitude with the fact that you said the success that I have had or that I will have or whatever, you're going to take it and do it in half the time that I have accomplished it because often people tend to hold themselves back. Coaches hold themselves back and they put a ceiling on their success. That happens so often. And I was guilty of doing that. I had looked to Christy as my mentor and I had seen the success that she had had and I said, Okay, well, you know, we all make excuses. Oh, well, because I have two kids, or well, at the time I had one kid, or whatever, because I have kids and she didn't, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm going to do it in twice the amount of time that she has accomplished it. 
And so that's what I'll do. So instead of saying half the amount of time, I said twice the amount of time, which I mean, either way, as long as you commit to doing it and getting it done, you will get it done as long as you stay consistent. But I love the attitude that you took in saying, okay, well, I see what she's done. And so I'm going to do it even sooner because here's the thing, guys, you, now that you guys have an awesome team to refer to and trainings and all this other stuff there for you, like we've been there, done that, all this stuff. So you guys should be, um, and, and again, everyone moves at different paces, whatever else, but it's easier for you to grow faster because I started from nothing. So nobody above me was placing coaches below me. So I started from square one. Whereas, you know, the majority of all of you guys on this team have a strong leg, have a power leg where coaches above you are placing coaches below you. And so you have that going into it right away. And you have the systems and all of that kind of stuff and people teaching you right away. And so that is huge. So, you know, you should say, I'm going to do it quicker than she did because it's totally possible and totally capable. So I love that point. And then I love how you talked about, um, you know, presenting the opportunity to everyone. Why not present this? Like people are often scared to invite in general, like you had mentioned earlier, but I didn't really know what to do, but people are often scared to invite, um, and especially invite to the coach opportunity. But I always tell people, I say, I encourage you because, um, you know, you are doing this for a reason. You see potential in this. You see the success that you know your coach has had or your people on your team have had or whatever, but you, there's a reason why you're doing this. Why wouldn't you wanna share that with somebody? Like there's excitement and passion that you have for this is why you started this. Why wouldn't you wanna share that with somebody? Why would you hold that back? Like really, are you embarrassed? Are you buying into all the things that people are assuming? Because you should know better because you said yes. So share that with somebody else. You know, people will weed themselves out though. I think anyone could benefit and everyone should benefit from this opportunity personally. But it's not for everybody because everybody is not good at, at being um, an entrepreneur. Everybody is not good at, you know, working their own hours and kind of making sure that they get stuff done and stuff. Some people need to be told what to do, when to do it, and work that, you know, very structured nine to five for somebody else. Um, and that's okay. But giving them the opportunity to make a decision and find out if this could be for them or not is not, you know, you should be giving them the opportunity. It's not for you to pre-decide before um, they even hear the opportunity, right? So there will be people who decide while they're in it, or maybe even before, uh, but while they're in it, that, oh, it's not for me. You know, sometimes people don't give it a fair chance, very much, very so often, but also people just, some people aren't cut out for this. We, and this is meant to encourage you, not discourage you, but we often say, like, we're the 2%. You know, because most people will start things and not finish things. Most people start a New Year's resolution and never follow through with it. Most people will start businesses and never follow through or do anything with it. We are the people who are different than them. We are the ones, not to say that we don't ever fail, and not to say that we don't ever make mistakes, or we don't have hard times, but we are the ones who continue to be consistent and move forward. And that is why we are successful, right? Um, so people will weed themselves out. And because you have coaches that quit or customers that quit or whatever else, it's not a reflection of you. It is a reflection of them and usually personal things that are going on in their own life and stuff like that too. Um, so it's hard to not, and I talked about this in my be, you know, commit to being here next year video where we talked about, or commits being here in a year. Um, we talked about the entrepreneur roller coaster and how there's going to be like at first when your first coach quits, you are crushed and it hurts and you're like, what did I do? And all this stuff. And as a leader, that is positive because you are always trying to improve and get better. But at the same time, you need to grow a thick skin as well because this is business and people will come and go, but there are going to be people who stick because they see the potential in this and they have the passion for paying it forward and they want to do what you've done and create their life by design and have financial freedom and all of that kind of stuff as well. So like Courtney said, she mentioned on that momentum that she had, how she struggled, struggled, struggled that one month 
and she she didn't hit her goal, but she hit success club that her non-negotiable, right? Um, and she did it the last time of the month, and she invited more people than she'd ever thought she'd have to, right? And that's what we say. When you are struggling, those are the times that you push harder, right? And it's like pumping that well. We talk about it. It's like pumping that well. And initially, as a brand new coach, you're often pumping that well. And like Courtney said, not getting a whole lot back. Wow, I'm putting in a lot of time for this. But that's what it is when you start any business. When you open up a restaurant, you know, everyone doesn't flood into the restaurant and you're not like raking in the dough right off the bat. You have to advertise and promote and put yourself out there and have discounted nights and have people come in and sample things and all that different kind of stuff before it gains some traction. And so it's important to keep pumping that well and being consistent and pushing even in the times of doubt and fear. And that is what creates success. Like what Courtney said, everything came to fruition that next month. And then that's why you keep pumping that well. So you have that momentum to go and roll with. Um, so, oh my gosh, I love this. Okay. So um, I want to talk about what's your your niche because often we try to appeal to everybody and you will be able to help all kinds of people like my niche is not men but I have helped men before in my business does it happen often no but it does happen or my niche is like you know my age range whatever else moms with young kids obviously Courtney is not a mom with young kids so she's not in my niche but I have connected with her on different levels because of our love for fitness and God and everything else so what is your niche court and how did you figure it out and how did you hone in on it because I feel like you're really definitely have you're really good at branding yourself especially with your blog and everything um and so i just want you to share a little bit about your like your personal marketing and brand and stuff that's funny because i feel like when i saw that question come up i was like i don't even know if i have a niche so i <laughs> didn't really exactly know how to answer that but i started thinking about it and i think one of the best pieces of advice that I found before I decided to become a coach, um, when I was doing all my research about coaching, um, I wanted to make sure I had a game plan in place before I did it. So I didn't exactly know how much amazing training I would get with the team. So um, I'm like a do-it-myself kind of person. So I went out and I found this one top coach talking about, um, you know, branding yourself and, and um basically figuring out what your person is. And she encouraged um, writing down basically like all these characteristics and traits of who that person would be for you. Um, and she said for her, it's describing herself. Like she just described who she is and that was who she was looking for. So she started gearing her um, social media towards that person. Um, and so as I went through that, I started writing down, okay, like who, who am I, who is this person that I'm speaking to? Um, how does this opportunity appeal to me? Um, and how can I make it appeal to other people? So, um, I really flushed out, I guess, like who my person would be. I like created it as if it was a person, um, wrote down her likes and dislikes, um, wrote down what stage of life she would be in. Um, and it pretty much is, it's me, you know, it's me a young married um, woman who doesn't have kids yet, um, who loves fitness and has a passion to travel and um, who has a ton of student loan debt that she needs to pay off and um, really has always felt like she had uh, a purpose but never knew how to fulfill that purpose and didn't want to do it on other people's terms. Um, I've always been really independent and leader leader oriented, so that's really who I guess I was reaching is those people that have kind of always gone against the grain. And um, so, yeah, I, I guess that's how I focused on who my audience would be. Um, and then ever since then, I've um, tried to um, like I'm big on Instagram. I love Instagram. That's like my tool of choice um, when it comes to network marketing. And I've tried to learn as much as I can about Instagram. So um, I was a part of the Bikini Body Guide by Kayla Itzen's community before joining Beachbody. And so that community has been huge to me to reach out to people that, one, love fitness. They are in the same situation as me as far as age and um, what they're doing with their life. They're young professionals. Um, 
So I reached out to a lot of those women um, and really found a support group there. Um, but also asked them, like the successful ones that had 16,000 plus followers, what are you doing? Like, do you take pictures with your phone? Do you take pictures with your camera? Um, and so, I, yeah, so I would kind of get their advice, figure out what, um, what they were doing that uh, draw, drew people in. And so I'm really focusing on each picture, not just giving value to my audience, but each picture being something that they would tap and like. <laughs> um, so a lot of it is just um, like I looked up how to um, like make appealing Instagram pictures. I Googled all this stuff. And so it's talking about like, you know, simplicity, like don't have a lot going on in the picture and make it bright and attractive to people. And, you know, writing sometimes on the picture isn't, you know, it can be, um, comes across sometimes salesy. So I try to limit that. And so just different tips that I picked up, um, along the way. And I notice, you know, what people are liking. And a lot of times they like selfies, which is kind of funny. That's that's what they like. So, you know, I'm not one to want to take selfies every stinking picture, but it that's what the people like. So, you know, you kind of got to go go with what works for your niche. Um, and so, yeah, those are the people that I'm reaching out to. I'm direct messaging them um, after building relationships with them on Instagram. Um, a lot of them I've become Facebook friends with, and many of them have said no. Um, but I will tell you that I was telling Josh tonight, um, my husband, that I'm pretty sure almost all of my coaches that I have, um, I didn't know prior to Beachbody. So I think that just speaks volumes to if you're reaching out to people, it's going to come. There's not, you know, if people have, if you're presenting this incredible opportunity and you believe in it, they're, they're going to want to be a part of it because it, it is amazing. Like <laughs> we live it every day and it's so cool. So um, Can I ask yeah, I guess that's my person. Yeah. Regarding that, because I know I just had a coach specifically asking me about that. And so I would love to hear what your thoughts on this of how you transitioned from the connecting um, and, you know, the forming and whatnot into the inviting process. I had my coaches ask me this tonight too, which is kind of funny because I'm not quite sure I form like people say I should. Um, I'm kind of like a shoot it straight type of a person. So um, there are some girls that I'll, you know, I'll follow for a long time and then I'll reach out to them or I'll like and comment back and forth for a little bit and then I'll reach out to them. But to be honest, I feel like I'll just go through my Instagram page, who's following me, so I know that they, I know that they're interested in me, because they're following me, and I'll look through, and I'll figure out, like, who's the kind of girl that I want to spend my time with, and I would like, you know, who might have interest in coaching, um, and once I do that, to be honest, like, I just direct message them, like, straight away, I don't even form with them, <laughs> so, um, I form with them after, maybe that's not the best way, but for me, it's worked, like, um, I think the message that I'm sending most of the time gets returned and it's a compliment to them. So whether they want it more details or not, um, most often they are complimented. Um, I think as my following count gets bigger, I think that that has played a part in it. So, you know, they're recognizing like, oh, okay, like you have quite a few followers and you picked me to message, like that's pretty cool. So that helps. Instagress is money. You have to be on that if you want to use Instagram at all for your network. Um, Making sure that they watch the training video though of how to use it properly is super important because obviously you watch and you know how. Yes. So I did have one of my new coaches who didn't um, watch it right away and she had some trouble liking some different pictures and she didn't understand the whole hashtag stuff. But now that she has, it's it's working for her. Not a problem at all. So know the training, know how to use it, know how to turn it on and off um, and be strategic with it. You know, don't don't just be someone that's going to, you know, follow all these people so they follow you. Like, you only need to do that for a little bit of time. Like, just be very strategic about it. Um, anyway, so, so yeah, so I'm just, um, I guess, direct messaging people right away. And then once they have um, interest, I will send them an email that I have 
I send everyone the same email. So um, it sounds like they're special because, I mean, it's a very generic and nice and genuine message, but it, it can go to anyone. So that saves me time. I'll email them, um, and then after that, if we if they still have interest, um, we'll set up a time to call. And I just started introducing that this past week, um, and two of the coaches signed up. So um, I think that that's working well. Um, to that's when I start forming, and they see that I'm a real person. You know, they're like having a good conversation with me. We're laughing. We're connecting. Um, so yeah, so that, and then I also sometimes, if, they, if they're if they interested but have a little bit of hesitancy, I'll ask them to find me on Facebook, and I'll put them in the Coach Open House, and that has um, worked volumes, or worked really well as well, um, for helping them just answer some questions and reservations. Good, awesome. I think too, because, I mean, you're, you say you, sh you shoot straight from the hip, like I do too, I, I put it out there, and then I, I connect because I'm like, oh my gosh, Especially as of late, like I'm like I like when I saw you, I was like, I want her, I want her on my team, I like her, anything I know about her. And then once I got to know you, I was like, yes, I was right, yep, that's the one I want on my team. Um, and uh, I think it's confidence too. And I know when I first started, I didn't have a lot of confidence with the coaching aspect. I was confident in the fitness aspect. I didn't have a lot of confidence in the coaching aspect. Um, and I didn't get a lot of coaches because of that. So once I gained confidence in that, um, it got better, right? And so you're projecting who you are and what you feel and stuff like that. And so if you're not leading with confidence, again, it's like you chose to do this uh, opportunity for a reason. You have passion about it to a certain extent. Like why else would you be here? So lead with that confidence. You know, heck yeah, why wouldn't someone want to be a coach? And so a lot of people will say no. That's okay. Again, the no's are okay. It cycles back around and a lot of positive things will move forward. How will anyone ever know if you don't give it a chance? So lead with confidence too. I think that's a huge thing about uh, what you do. Okay, we need to wrap up in like the next few minutes because we don't want this to go too, too long. There's so many good things. We could go on forever. Um, okay, so I want to do um, what are your goals now and what are you doing to achieve them? And then um, let's do top tips for hitting Success Club consistently and growing your team. Okay, sure. Um, so my goals now, I would like to hit to start by January 1. Um, I have three coaches that I think fully can do this because um, they're already emeralds. The other coaches for sure will hit diamond as well, but they um, are just starting their journey as well. So um, super excited to see what my team is going to do. That's my first goal. Uh, beyond that, um, I have now set a higher goal of non-negotiable success club 10 each month. Um, that's kind of scary, but um, it's been working and I have momentum at the very beginning of the month. So uh, that's encouraging as well when you see that um, and don't feel like you're trying to play catch up all the time. Um, so those are my goals. I also, I would love to be an elite coach. I'm not even sure if I know what that means, but I think I would love to do that. <laughs> and like, I, you know, I was, what? <laughs> Next year for sure, for sure. Yeah. And I'm seeing, you know, like all these awesome like trips and things that people get to go on. And I'm like, well, why can't that be me? Like they started somewhere too. Like maybe I don't know what it means to be exactly in their positions stats wise, but I didn't know what coaching was and I hit the ground running now and I'm a diamond. So I don't know, you know, anything's possible. Um, so yeah, I would like to learn what, what the next goals are and kind of figure those out. But, um, I do want to build it up to be more than a six-figure income every year um, just to be able to go after some dreams that my husband and I have. Um, and then to see my coaches um, replicate the success, you know, it's not very fun if it's just me adding to the team. So um, it's so much fun when we get to share that together with them. Um, so I'm really excited to see how my coaches grow in the next year. Um, and then the next question was success club. Yeah, top tips for hitting it um, consistently. Yeah, how you yeah. and and growing your team. Good question. Um, I think non-negotiable. You have to be inviting people, um, and that's to me. I invite people to coaching opportunity more than a challenge group um, because my 
I was someone that was in um, who was really active in her fitness and, and nutrition, maybe not nutrition, we've always been working on that, but fitness style, <laughs> that's always been a part of my life. Um, and so, you know, with that in mind, like the people I'm reaching out to are people that already are active. So why not want them to be coaches? Because they're already killing it. Like, let's do that. You know, let's move you over into being a coach and get paid for what you're doing. Um, exactly. So, and plus, like in my mind, I'm kind of like, okay, well, that's an automatic two points because they're signing up with a challenge pack. Plus, they're building a business, you know. So to me, that's worth it more than inviting to, I mean, a challenge group is awesome as well. But I think long term, that is kind of where my emphasis is. Um, and I still invite people to the challenge group, but I think that's more indirectly with my posts. Um, and not so much directly. Um, although my best month for challenge groups came when I was inviting people directly. So um, I do need to implement that more. Um, but I'm inviting like, uh, you know, anywhere from three to 10 people a day to the opportunity. It doesn't cost me anything. I'm just copy and pasting a message. Um, and then I get the opportunity to spend time and get to know the person once they've expressed interest. So um, I think inviting people, um, posting all the time, you know, like two to three times a day, if not more. Um, in our diamond training, Scotty, Scotty Hobbs or something was talking about how he posts like four to five times a day. Um, so the more that you're getting in front of people, the more eyes that they're having on you. Um, and be creative with how people are getting their eyes on you. You know, I'm trying to be creative with my blog and get other um, fitness uh, accounts from Instagram on my blog talking about fitness, they're not related to Beachbody. They're not personal trainers or anything. Excuse me, but they have way more followers than I do. And so even having them mention that they're over on my blog gets eyes on my blog. They click on the about, they find out I'm a coach, maybe someone reaches out to me. Um, so it's just about getting creative to find people to get eyes on your stuff. Um, so that's, I guess, how I'm hitting Success Club each month. Yeah, that's awesome. And it, like you said, it's the, it's just the consistently doing it. You're inviting three to ten people each day. And the way that you're doing that is you are growing your network. So you're adding people. like So to come up with something creative, so you have a blog that you had even before you started coaching with Beachbody. So you're using that. And you said, okay, I'm going to get other people to – do a, a guest post they promote this then their people see my blog and their people maybe follow me whatever else and stuff like that and right. it's not other coaches obviously who you know are doing things we're not like poaching from other coaches or whatever but it's right. yeah people who are interested in fitness who need help who and then maybe those people who knows maybe those people want to be a coach but often a lot of people that have a lot of followers on Instagram um, will write you off on that because they're like, oh, you're just after me and my followers or whatever. So if you go right at them with the coaching opportunity. So that's um, right. a great, great approach. So just aiming, like we talked about, adding to your network, inviting mm -hmm. people consistently so that people know what you're doing, and then posting consistently. It really isn't rocket science, guys. It's like all the same stuff that we talk about all the time. It's just in the way that you do it. Everyone does it slightly different, has their own approach of how they make things happen, but it's all the same stuff. So it's just taking it. Maybe you have to try a couple different things, kind of stumble, fumble around until you figure out what works best for you. And then it's moving forward and running with that. And then it might change over time and stuff like that too, but you run with it. Um, so that's awesome. L last closing, I think this is going, I think we're going like 45 minutes. So like last closing thoughts. <laughs> um, I guess I would just say that all of our coaches, all of the people building businesses, we know what to do. Like it's out there for everyone to learn. You know what to do. You know exactly what to do every day. You are to invite, be a product of the product, share your story and personal development. Like those are the things that you need to be doing every day. So just apply those. Like that's what I did and I'm involved in my training and I'm involved in diamond training and I'm involved in my people's training. And that's what's moving me forward is just applying everything. Awesome. I never stop learning. Yes. 
Yes. And those make the best leaders too. The, the, the people who are continuously growing and looking to better themselves. Those are the people who are going to be great leaders. Um, and also I think an important thing to talk about is you, you don't have to know everything to be a great leader also, you know, like to just, you're ahead of where your coaches are. You're leading the way. You find it, figure it out together. You're just sharing with them what works for you. Hey, it might not work for them. Like what I do might not work for Courtney. Like we said, we have a totally different niche, whatever else. So, um, but I just share with her what I've done and, and help her out. And like she said, she's very proactive. She goes out and seeks out, you know, advice from other people and everything else too. And that's what makes a very well-rounded coach as well. You know, like I can't give you a successful business on a platter. You have to put the time and effort into it also. I will tell you everything I know and I will mentor you to the best of my ability. Um, but yeah, so awesome. There was tons of good nuggets in there. Um, I hope you guys, I should have told you to get out pen and paper beforehand, but I did in the little note section. So hopefully you have done that and you've taken lots of great notes. Um, if you have any questions uh, for Courtney, just post below and she will answer any of your questions. I just really appreciate you coming on. I know it's like 1130 at night over there. Um, so I appreciate you doing this in the time difference. Um, and I'm just really stoked for all the success that you're having court. I know you're going to do big things and you're doing it even way faster than I even imagined. I love the team that you're growing and the hearts of those people that are coming on and, and it's just really exciting. So, um, and I wrote down that I need to talk to you about elite and tell you all about it, what it is. So I will definitely, will definitely set up the time for that. All right. So have a great week, pay it forward. I hope this has inspired you. I know it's inspired me to get better and to really um, make this a great month.